Legend or Lie number 31, The White String. A girl in Japan wanted to get her ears pierced for her birthday, and although her parents disapproved, she pled and begged until they finally relented and gave her the money for it. But once the girl got the approval and the money, she decided rather than to pay somebody to pierce her ears, she could just have her friend do it and pocket the cash. So later that day, her friend heated a needle and popped it through her lobe, and immediately she knew something was wrong. She couldn't really describe it, but it was like a fuzzy feeling in her head. But she didn't really care, she just ignored it and went to spend the money her parents gave her at the mall. But the next day in class, her ear started burning, so she reached up and felt something poking out. She pulled and pulled and pulled until she saw this long white string coming out. And she was a little disturbed, but she just kept pulling and pulling and it just kept coming and coming. She ran out of class and rushed to the bathroom, holding this long white string that she didn't know what to do with. And when she was in the stall, she decided it had to go. And she reached into her bag and got a pair of scissors and cut the string. Immediately, everything went dark. She started screaming so loud that the whole school came rushing to her aid. And when the teachers realized what was going on, they notified her parents and rushed her to the hospital. When she was examined, the doctor came out to talk to the parents and he was stunned. He told them that somehow she had pulled out her optic nerve and now that it was snipped, there was nothing he could do. She would be blind forever. But what do you think about this tragic tale? Is it true? Or are we all being strung along? situation where you are asked anything along these lines, here is what you say in reply. Fred Bear does not exist. Spring Bonnie does not exist. Nothing happened to anyone. He does not exist. 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 Well, we thought we had a ghost story for you tonight about an old state hospital that was haunted. But when investigative reporter Jace Larson started looking into it, he discovered a place with an even more questionable One old types. hospital that's reportedly filled with the spirits of patients who never checked out. I think you probably ought to clear. I don't think that's something good, dude. I really don't. I'm getting a really bad feeling. My body is like shaking. Like I feel like I'm like on like a shaking table. I've never really had it go that way before. <laughs> Right now, no exaggeration. Joy, Joy they're happy that we're doing it. Dude, let's we go. used to take freshmen there just to tell them all kinds of ghost stories. Make your way over here, please. Can somebody make a noise real quick, please? Jesus. Thank you. <laughs> That's just amazing. And I'm home alone, right? But...
what happens at Cook County Jail in Chicago. We will knock you to the cow. Cold. When you, when cold. you hit that ground, you will hit this. Get, get that, that butt! <laughs> Motherfucker, get that. Nah, the next fight in the beat. Get the butt. <laughs> Motherfucker, go on. Pull your pants down. Pull your drawers down. Open up your ass and spin your ass. And now you ass a bitch. I've done some disturbing interviews over the years, but that right there is really at the top of my list. <laughs> right there. Yeah. They say the dudes knock you out and spit in your ass. If, you know, later on in the video, he explains the reason why they do that is that if you have like human, like uh, liquid inside of you, that's officially considered. So then your family has to get called and they have to tell you that, that you know, their relative just got in prison. <laughs> when you were locked up, was that a thing? Were dudes getting in prison and shit like that? Nah, I wouldn't hit it, hit it. You know, like, they gotta knock you out and catch you and knock you out and fuck you. You know, like, but it wasn't no heavy, heavy. It wasn't no heavy, heavy shit. Who's the girl? You are! <laughs> that shit disturbed the fuck out of me. Seems every time I take a drink, I'm reaching out for you. Seems I'm always late night texting, reaching out for you. Every morning I find drunken messages spilling the truth on you. Lock your door, lock your door, always lock your freaking door. That's something my dad has taught me and my sister since we've had cars. That as soon as we get in the car, you lock your door. And there's, I would say like 5-10% to 10 of the time I don't. And when he catches me, he gets really mad. <laughs> and if I didn't do it 10% of the time, I'm doing it 100% of the time now. I learned my freaking lesson. So I asked my husband to take care of the babies while I got my eyebrows done and got me some coffee, some me time. <laughs> and as soon as I get in my car, I lock my doors and I see this guy that's about to walk through my, like, walk by my car. And I, since I don't always lock my doors, I just double check that I did lock them, which they were. And it's cool. He walks by. I was like, okay, you know, whatever. But I keep looking through the side mirror and this fool really turns and tries to like grab the back seat door. As soon as I see his hand reach for the back seat, I like just take off and then I call my husband. <sighs> and then on my way back, I'm back home, but on my way back, I was like, what if my doors were unlocked and what if my kids were in the back seat like i don't even want to think about it but i dad i learned my lesson never 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 gonna leave my doors unlocked because i'm still like shaking up so lock your doors